This video is from 1903 and these gentlemen are Wright brothers. Getting on board the very first flight which was powered. And there are a few videos like this which are very well known and doesn't require any explaining. During 1969, we had first humans stepping on moon on Saturn V rocket during Apollo 11 mission. And if you think about both of these events, they're only 66 years apart. And it's pretty insane considering before the Wright brothers, we have recorded history of thousands of years that human beings were trying to fly. Pretty remarkable in terms of what human beings can achieve in a very short period of time. Speaking of remarkable, perhaps one of the best things which we do is ask questions. It's because we have this innate ability to ponder about things. For example, why does an apple fall off a tree? And for geniuses like Galileo and Newton, these were the very questions which led them to discover the fundamental forces of physics, which governs everything that we know of in our universe in a very uniform way without an exception. And since on this channel we talk a lot about astronomy, let's explore one of these fundamental forces of physics. An electromagnetic spectrum. Have you ever wondered, looking up at the night sky, that that star, how far is that? And how is it that the scientists are able to tell us that that star or that galaxy is 100 million light years away? I'll give you a hint. The answer lies within the light. Universe is sending us all the information in the form of light. And astronomy is all about study of that light on electromagnetic spectrum. And just by analyzing different wavelengths of light, we are able to decode some of the most difficult questions about the origin of our universe. And we have been able to nail down the number about birth of universe at 13.8 billion years with our most advanced telescopes. But there's also a theoretical limit even to our advanced telescopes like Hubble, which has claimed the throne for being the most successful science project of all time for almost three decades since its deployment in 1990. Hubble observes in the spectrum from near ultraviolet, visible, to infrared. And the new James Webb telescope is specifically designed to observe from visible red to mid-infrared, which will enable us to see objects 100 times fainter than those detected by Hubble. Now, if you may ask why infrared, let me explain. Have you ever noticed a sound of a vehicle coming towards us have a different pitch compared to when it's going away from us? It's called the Doppler effect. And it's because that sound waves gets compressed as vehicle is coming towards us, causing the waves to be compressed, which equals high frequency, as it moves away from us, causes longer waves, which equals low frequency. Now, with the same rules, an object moving towards us would appear to emit a compressed or a high frequency of wavelength of light, thus appearing blue shifted on color on the EM spectrum. And an object which is going away from us would have its light wave stretched, thus a longer wavelength, a low frequency appearing red shifted, implying that the object is moving away from us. And it's because of this exact reason we know that the universe is expanding. And the scientists believe that light emitted by the earliest forming stars and galaxies have been traveling since the beginning of universe. As universe keeps on expanding, the early light has red shifted into the infrared spectrum by the time it's reaching us. And a telescope which is precisely designed to read those signals can capture that, revealing us the earliest days of the universe. So we all know Earth spins on its axis as demonstrated by this beautiful revolving globe here. And it takes about 24 hours to do so, okay? Now Earth around the equator is about 24 to 25,000 miles. So that's very nice and easy math. If you're standing at the equator, 
along with the Earth due east, you're traveling at a speed of about 1000 miles per hour. Now, if you're at one of the poles, you're not going anywhere because the Earth is spinning under you. Now, the launch site logic, if you are a rocket scientist, you would like to take advantage of that free Earth rotation because that means you have to carry less fuel on your rocket and that means cutting down the launch costs. And James Webb Telescope was launched right here, very close to the equator at French Guiana. So now you know. And if we put this telescope in Earth's orbit, just like we have Hubble Telescope, we will run into a big issue. And it's because any object which has a temperature radiates infrared from coolest of things like an ice cube to animals to humans and yes even big things like earth so to have an infrared telescope which orbits earth is going to be a nightmare it's like trying to stargaze with very bright lights on around you so we want it to be away from earth or any celestial body for that matter so let's put it in an orbit far away from earth but that's where we run into another issue. And to understand this, let's have a brief look into the orbital mechanics. The details of it is very complex, but for this video, let's just remember that the further orbit object is in, the longer it takes to go around. And the smaller the orbit, the faster it takes to go around. Now, if you remember the coin funnel experiment, where a coin with the more distance to the center goes slower in the orbit and the coin closer to the center goes faster and faster. It's exactly the same way in the space. So if we put James Webb telescope in an orbit away from Earth, it will go slower due to one of the Kepler's law as we discussed, making it hard to communicate with the satellite as it will not going to be in line with Earth always to send a signal. So not only we need the telescope to be away from Earth to avoid infrared radiation, but also at the same time needed to be staying relative to Earth for the ease of communication and avoiding other complex problems. Which brings us to the next point, the parking site logic. Earth and Sun create special points in space where the gravitational pull cancels out each other. And it's not just Earth and Sun, it can be any two celestial objects in space which will create these five points. They're called the Lagrange points. So let's see what happens at L2 point where James Webb telescope is being parked. The gravitational pull of Sun will of course keep the telescope in an orbit, which is slower than Earth's orbit. But Earth also has a gravitational pull on the telescope. And parking it at just the right spot at L2 point would contribute to the extra gravity needed to keep the James Webb traveling at the right speed to keep up traveling relative to Earth's orbit. Pretty neat it's also designed to avoid sun's heat with its obnoxiously designed sun shield to keep away sun's heat and temperature on sun facing side can reach upwards of 125 degrees and the inner side telescope would be operating at a minus 235 degrees which is perfect for observing in the infrared spectrum 